Hello. This is the fourth film in the Stand and Experience series, and in it you will see what is available for the potato grower in 1995. During the last 12 months, Standards have been very busy developing new products, and these include the Spectra de Stoner, the Big Boy Planter, and the Status Potato Harvester. We know how difficult it is for busy farmers to leave their farms during the season, and therefore it is quite difficult for you to see these machines at work on demonstration. However, they are all seen in this video, and for that reason, we think you'll enjoy it. The potato year often starts with bed forming, so why not start the film in the same way, with the stand and bed former? Since this film is used in overseas markets, we'll take a moment to explain to our overseas viewers what's going on here. The land has been ploughed, and this machine is ridging it up so that a de-stoner can move into the ridge to sieve out not only stones, but also to crumble up soil clods. This results in a better potato bed less risk of damage to the potatoes, and a quicker harvest. If conditions are particularly difficult, a powered bed cultivator can be attached to the bed former. The stand and cultibed is 1.8 metres wide and has an eight-speed gearbox, uses tines as opposed to spikes, and is rated at up to 120 horsepower. It can therefore tackle any soil conditions and fast, on this Warwickshire farm, the grower was well pleased with his culti bed. We've had a very difficult uh, winter, as everyone knows, and well, personally I've never seen the ground so wet. So we thought we'd have to invest in Andy's new machine, and uh, I am very, very pleased with it. It's making an excellent job. And you'll see by the film what the rotten conditions we've got. I think it uh, put the planting forward by at least ten days. On lighter land on a neighbouring farm, the ability of the cultibed to operate at high forward speeds is very clear. Used with an earlier model of the bed former already seen, a nicely formed bulk is left for the de-stoner. Standards offer two de-stoners. The first is a very simple and inexpensive machine called the Clodmaster. It's fully mounted on the tractor and can therefore turn on a sixpence. Let Roger Southwell, a well-known Norfolk grower, tell us why he bought a Clodmaster in 1994. Well, first and foremost, it had to be the price. Uh, the cheapest uh, deep clodder, stroke deep stoner on the market. Uh, the other thing that we were most anxious to do was to cut down the amount of wasteland between the headlands and the rowers. And uh, the Clodmaster, being fully mounted, enabled us to turn round in a much shorter space uh, and also to turn around much, much faster. As far as outputs are concerned, uh, again, we've been very satisfied with the performance. Um, in ideal conditions, uh, we've been achieving uh, something like an, an acre in 40 minutes, and uh, I don't think there's been a time when we've dropped below uh, an acre an hour. From a, a bed point of view, we've been able, uh, in all cases so far this year, to uh, end up with a bed of sufficient uh, soil, uh, approximately nine to anywhere between nine inches and a foot uh, deep. Uh, and we are very uh, pleased with the shape of the bed as well. Those growers who watched last year's video may remember a new de-stoner prototype, the Spectra. This featured a barrel type clod crumbler. And in the dry conditions that generally prevailed in the spring of 1993, it performed very satisfactorily. However, the much wetter conditions experienced in 1994 showed us that although the basic principle of spectra was correct, it would be sensible to reconsider the design of the barrel crumbler. So, during 1994, several modified pre-production models were built to complete the development program incorporating a number of new and improved features. The principal difference between this year's machines and last year's is the introduction of a powered rotor set above the digging web. This rotor is adjustable for height and for speed by the operator from his cab. We know conditions can change from one end of the field to the other, from one field to the next, or from one day to the next. Why not let the operator, therefore, have the ability to adjust the de-stoner's performance to suit the conditions? 
Not only can he adjust the rotor, but he can also raise and lower the angle of the second web, thereby increasing or decreasing the amount of crumbling it achieves. He can apply more or less agitation, and he can increase or decrease the pressure on the draper web, all from the cab on the move. This is what sets Spectra apart. Furthermore, being a web machine, the quality of work is unaffected by the inevitable wear and tear that takes place in any de-stoner. The bed will look no different after 100 acres than after one acre. Here's Spectra at work as a declodder. There's no stone present in the soil. The need is for the clods to be crumbled and made into a bed. This Spectra is the 1.7 metre wide model, designed for the grower who is looking to plant wider rows. With the guard raised for filming, it can be seen how the rotor cuts up the clods, bursting them apart so that the sieving action is instantly more efficient. A deep, well-prepared soil bed is produced with only a light sprinkling of small clod on the surface. Now we jump ahead to August, where a 1.5 metre wide model is preparing carrot land. The land is blow-away sand, but it contains a mass of stone. All but the very smallest must be removed. With a good forward speed, a feature of Spectra, the soil is well sieved and the desired separation is achieved. The flow of material through the Spectra shows its abilities to separate a lot of soil and to leave the sort of bed which would warm the cockles of any carrot grower's heart. Having prepared the soil for planting, it's to planting into that soil that we shall now turn. There are some in the industry who are claiming that planter development seems to be slowing down. Well, this may be true for some suppliers, but not for Standen. For 1995, we're seeing the full introduction of the new super big two and three row models, of the automatic depth control system, of the electronic space selector, and of a new big ridging body. We'll start by looking at each planter model in turn, viewed first under construction in our Ely factory and then in the field. The range starts with the Model 20, which will plant at rows between 28 and 36 inches. This particular machine is fitted with the new big-bodied platypus ridges. As a complement to the hopper models, there's a platform model. On this Kent farm, desperately long chits on early rocket would cause any other planter almost insuperable problems. But not the standen, as the grower commented. The planter has coped very well with the long chits. The rocket, some of the chits on those were well over a foot long. And before we used to have people riding on the back of the bulk hoppers with an iron crowbar just feeding them through. Most of the bruts used to come off and of course that's delays and emergence. We like to go for a 10 inch spacing here and depending exactly when we put it in between two and three inches depth on the bulk, um, it, it is very accurate. The depth is very consistent. I've never known such consistent depth of planting. This new Standen Model 20, filmed in Essex, has been farmer modified to match his all-terrain loader's extra wide one ton bucket. The grower was very pleased with it. Um, we've been very pleased with the machine, um, it does a good job on spacing. Uh, we're planting at the moment uh, large 45-55 Romano seed. Um, and a very tight spacing of about 28 centimetres. Um, and the, the spacings have been, have been very good. As you can see we're on some fairly stiff um, Essex clay which is marginal land for all growing potatoes. Um, and the plant has performed exceptionally well in, in, in terrible, terrible spring conditions. That's the point. The stand and planter will go in what many would see as marginal conditions. Not all springs are dry, as 1994 will remind many viewers. Before turning our attention to the new 1995 products, we'll remind ourselves of the principal feature of all stand and planters, the electronically controlled belt feed system. For the sake of filming, the hopper has been allowed to nearly empty to show how the belts trickle the tubers through to the cup feed area. 
An electronic monitor senses the number of potatoes in the cup feed area, and this, via electromagnetic clutches, is what controls the belt feed. The benefit is that chits are retained, very accurate seed delivery is achieved, and a better crop results. Growers on hillsides will also benefit because the system will compensate for differing angles of work. This Norfolk farmer uses a three-row stand and planter, although in this field it's being used in two-row form. What's special about this planter is that it's fitted with the stand and space selector option. This device allows the operator to both set and monitor seed spacing from the cab. The normal chain drive to the cup feed system is replaced by a hydraulic motor. The oil flow to this motor is monitored by sensors, which increase or decrease the flow under command of a cab-mounted control box. The left-hand figures show the desired spacing. The right-hand, what is actually being achieved. Change the desired spacing and watch the actual spacing follow. Useful where field conditions vary, or when planting headlands, or where varieties change. The system also allows the planting action to be switched off at the headland, which eliminates the problem of uncovered tubers at the end of each row. For 1995, the space selector will also give a monitor of tuber numbers. And so, to the new big boy planter. It's one big planter. A substantial chassis carries a one and a half ton hopper, and the planter itself, being wider than normal, can make 1.7 metre wide beds. It can be ordered as either a two row or as a three row machine. So what about three row planting? It was in 1991 that Standen introduced their first three row planter, its major feature being its forward stepped middle row. This allowed fast forward speeds to be achieved, with no loss of the planter's traditional planting accuracy. Row spacings of 15 to 17 inches could be achieved. But now wider row spacings are needed, and that's where the big boy comes in. Let's look first at its automatic depth control system. Back in the factory, a unit is being tested. It's simple enough. As the depth wheel moves up and down, so the hydraulic rams open and close, assuring absolute evenness of planting depth. We'll close this part of the film by taking a visit to Nottinghamshire to film one of the five big boy planters at work on well-known grower Tony Strawson's farm. Here's Mr Strawson's view. Andy, uh, I'm pleased to see you here filming today. Uh, the, the planters that we bought, the five planters, are going well and uh, and there's a guy to call into plan. Debs control is a, a key part of our operation, an accurate Debs control. And on this standard planter, we have an automatic hydraulic Debs control system. A, a further point is the, the belt feed system on the standard planter. Today, we're planting chitted seed. And with this belt feed, it's giving sort of very little damage to the, the chits on the, uh, on the seed potatoes. This is the first year we've um, uh, gone on to a two, two metre uh, system and we're planting three rows in that two metre. Output per day, I would think, is about two acres an hour, maybe three acres an hour, and uh, good going, good filling up without chittered seed. Uh, Reliability is good, and uh, you know, I'm nothing but praise for the planter. So that's Standen's new planters, something there to interest any grower. If you get the planting right, everything else should follow, two row or three row. The Isle of Wight is one of the earliest potato areas in the country, and it's here that we find Mr Tom Smith, who's now on his second statesman in two years. He uses the unmanned model, with the optional inspection platform at the rear. We much prefer this machine is against the unmanned because our slopes don't allow us to haul that extra weight up and down every day of the year. We'd like to be out the market by the end of July, which means that we've been lifting through, uh, through the summer. The lifting period has been very difficult. We've, we've got on very well. Uh, last year we got on very well with the Spanish Statesman. The roll, roll of tables allowed us to lift at that time of the year when I don't think any other, anyone else was, was going. Comparing this machine, the, the, this Statesman 2 model with the model we had last year, we can see all the improvements. But we're well pleased with them. 
Let's spend a few moments reminding ourselves of the ability of the roller table to handle a high throughput of material. There's just one home roller on the Statesman. This is very efficient, being four inches in diameter and being adjustable for position by a simple handle arrangement. The standard roller table takes out the rest of the horn, snatching it through so as to avoid nipping the potatoes. Those people viewing this piece of film who are unfamiliar with our roller table will assume that the potatoes, which at this early stage of growth are very tender, must suffer damage. Those, however, who are familiar with the Statesman will know that appearances deceive. No damage is being done. Why else would growers buy second machines? If we look underneath the table, we'll notice that not only is there the usual Niagara of material falling through, but even polythene left over from the last gale is neatly passed to the ground. Not many harvesters can do that. Other new features on the Statesman too include a wider, longer elevator of much stronger design to allow deep filling of accompanying trailers. Being 900 millimetres wide, it has the ability to load over 40 tonnes an hour, as we shall see later. Lastly, this harvester is fitted with two sets of adjustable clog fingers. The rubber blocks are raised and lowered by an electric ram, controllable from the cab. Returning to the mainland, your cameraman couldn't resist a shot of the world's biggest warship, the USS George Washington. Nor, for that matter, could he resist the world's biggest yacht. Our second port of call on Earlys is to Quex Park in Kent, where a new Man Statesman II replaced 85 hand pickers. A front-mounted stand and topper is used, this fine topper becoming ever more popular as growers appreciate its ability to top cleanly, accurately and at fast forward speeds. Here's what the farm manager had to say about his new harvester. We were very worried to use a harvester, we were very anxious about using it. It's done everything we wanted it to do. Um, the work rate is right and it was able to go in wet conditions. And there's now no question we'll ever go back to hand picking. And I think you'll find that will be the trend in the area. But they need the confidence to go for a machine that will work, and this one will. We are able to go when no one else could. And so the first 120 tonne was lifted at very high prices when no one else frankly in the South England could go, so that was very beneficial to us. At this point of the film, we've seen all the stand and range at work, so perhaps it's now appropriate to remind viewers that all our machines are part of a system. And here, at one of our premier dealers working demonstrations, we can see the whole system at work in one field. Using mostly farmers' own machines, we have a rather unusual situation where a crop is being both planted and harvested at the same time. It's mid-June, the corn is ripening, and a crop of Astara is being lifted by a recently purchased Statesman too. The top is being defoliated by an FM flail topper, in this instance mounted on the rear of the tractor. Meanwhile, across the field, the bed former and culti bed are setting up the beds for the spectra. The spectra, maintaining a brisk forward speed, prepares the bed for planting. And then a platform planter sets the seed for a second crop to be harvested in September or October. Seeing so many stand and machines in one field once again demonstrates the company's commitment to the potato grower and the continuing investment made by the company in new products. Not all conditions are perfect, as many growers know, so we're now up in Yorkshire to check how the statesman performs in excessive weed. What went wrong? I seem to have a failure with the herbicide, it didn't do a very good job, and the weed gradually took over and then just smothered the crop out. And how has his new Statesman II coped? It's done an excellent job. I would have nearly had to have, have abandoned it with our old harvester. I don't think it would have coped at all. Why did he buy the harvester? The last video you made. <laughs> Came through the post, I watched it and thought it looked a good machine, so we tried one. Well, we didn't actually see one work before, we, it, before this one was delivered onto farm. We just saw the video. It does everything that they said it would do. Don't need anybody on the grader, just me and the trailer driver. And uh, there's no, obviously, as you can see, there's nobody on the machine. It's put three people out of work, basically. How did his driver take to it? Seems to be managing very well. 
He seems to have got the hang of it very quickly. A word now from the driver. I think it's a lot easier to use. It's, it's more handy. Everything's open. You can get to everything. There's nothing hidden away. You don't have to crawl around things with grease guns or anything like that. You can get to everything. And the all-important field settings. They're easy to do. Everything's on handles. Less of a spanner job, which nobody likes. They encourage you to actually get out there and do it and make a good job of it. It's not only in the UK that Standen has been active. Here in Holland, farmers know a thing or two about potatoes, and in 1994, they were about to know a thing or two about the Standen Statesman. At a major national demonstration in the north of Holland, the Standen Harvester led out the eight harvesters which were to be put through their paces. To make the subsequent assessments fair, all the harvesters worked in echelon. The polder soil was extremely sticky, with the potatoes coming up like scotch eggs. The conditions proved a real test for all the harvesters present, in particular for those not fitted with roller tables, and some with. To Dutch growers, the statesman was a revelation. It attracted a large crowd as it showed what it could do. The 36mm web configuration meant that plenty of soil was being lifted. However, the usual quality of separation was achieved so that the load passing to the trailer was judged by those present to be as good as any. Losses behind the harvester, which were assessed by the organisers, were negligible. The standard importer had plenty to talk about, with a lot of interest. He even had to enrol your cameraman. The same cameraman seems to have made a friend of at least one visitor. Across the Atlantic Ocean, the statesman was making an even bigger impression. This was in Canada, the land of big fields and big machines. Typically, growers use a combination of four-row and two-row windrowers to place six rows between two yet to be dug, to lift eight rows in total. The first grower who saw the statesman asked where the rest of the machine was. However, very soon they realised that British technology was well ahead of anything they had to offer. Although conditions were very different to Europe's, the statesman, with just an 85 horsepower tractor, was their master. Conditions varied enormously. With no de-stoning, some crops were full of stone. The roller table met the challenge head on or heavy grass and weed infestation. As usual, no problem. Visitors were amazed by what they saw. The word soon spread. This grower was no exception. I had watched the video and I had found this. It Did looked a little far-fetched, really. <laughs> and then... That's just what I was going to say. Did you think it was a little too good to be it true? It looked a little far-fetched and then uh, I figured this would be the spot to try it. Very, very pleased with it. We tried digging with our own mister there. We couldn't do anything. We'd go five or six hundred feet. And everything would just bunch up with sods. Virtually no sod at all. It just so did an excellent job. Exports are increasingly important to Standen. And in 1994, harvesters were shipped to markets which included Australia, South Africa, Canada, Holland and Germany. The Potato Marketing Board's September demonstration is probably the most important demo held anywhere in the world. Visitors in their thousands from both the UK and overseas flocked to York to see what the industry had to offer. Those who attended the first day had the benefit of seeing nearly 30 different harvesters at work, including a number of new models. Standen fielded no less than three new harvesters. The best known of the three was the Statesman II, 100 of which were sold during 1994. Never short of a crowd of interested growers, it showed how green top should be handled. The horn roller has removed most of it, and what's left, the rollers take out. The sample in the trailer is 100% clean. Apart from Statesman II, there were two brand new harvesters. The first was the Standen Vulmaus Scimitar II, a two-row, fully offset harvester, which is to be offered to the UK grower once its development programme is completed.
Manufactured by Standen's German associates, the Scimitar II features a through-flow divining web system, which handles all the hole and a hedgehog separation system to remove small stones and clods. A picking off table for up to six people provides further cleaning. On this model, the crop passes direct to the trailer, but also available is a five-ton bunker or a bagging platform. An interesting concept, which we believe will have a place in the UK market. However, the real interest centred around the new stand and status, as evidenced by the crowds that surrounded it during the day. We'll be covering the status at the end of this film, so we'll say no more about it here, except that status is an all-new harvester, combining built-in simplicity with a huge cleaning performance and the absolute minimum of drops. The second day was a bit of a washout. 25 millimetres of rain overnight, having turned the site into a quagmire. Exhibitors corralled their harvesters around their static stands and carried on selling despite the rain. Cheerfulness was the order of the day. Some were more willing to be filmed than others, as these shots show. But even in the rain, everyone agreed that the PMB had scored another hit. All thanks must go to Oliver Statham, who was the driving force behind the whole event. We last looked closely at the FM topper in this film in the summer, when it was working on green top. It's time to look at it again, now in October, in a variety that can be tricky to top, Cara. The hole is often over five feet long, as long, in fact, as a sales manager, and can present quite a challenge to the average topper. But of course, the FM topper is not an average topper. Seen here working with the new status, it's leaving a beautifully topped pair of ridges, with all the chopped material being reduced to something that will take very little trouble to incorporate during subsequent cultivations. It shows once again what a splendid topper the stand and topper is, and how it will cope with just about anything in the field. We're now approaching the end of this film, which has shown you a number of stand and products at work during 1994. Earlier, we promised you a glimpse of our new harvester, the Status, which was built in our development workshop during 1994. So, let's now look at this important new machine as it comes together, part by part, piece by piece, bit by bit, growing day by day until it's ready for rollout. Although only a limited number of statuses will be available for sale in 1995, that's no reason why we shouldn't lift the corner of the curtain and give you a glimpse of what's coming next. Status is basically a wider version of the Statesman too, but it is more than just a wider version, as we shall now see. Here then is the prototype on the day it was completed. Let's run through a few of its features. There's a low-level drawbar with integral steering. The first web is a full 1700 millimetres wide to allow status to harvest rows of up to 40 inches or 1.7 metre wide beds. Because the web is both wider and longer, an additional set of driving rollers is fitted to eliminate the possibility of slip. Sweeping clod fingers are an option, as are electrically controlled clod fingers with adjustable pressure control. The second web is wider than the first web to encourage free flow through the harvester. Due to a novel drive system, the drop from the second web onto the table is only five inches, nothing when compared to the competition. It's connected to the roller table so that as the table is angled, it moves with it, maintaining this minimal drop. The web can be extended rearwards over the roller table if necessary. The back of the table is fixed with a reverse running roller to extract the last bit of horn. The table is 1750 millimeters wide with 20 long rollers. These can reverse and are adjustable for speed. It's by far and away the largest table on the market, with nearly two square metres of cleaning area. 
The discharge elevator is the same as Statesman and includes the option of a simple windrowing system. Just flick a switch in the cab and the crossweb reverses and a chute is lowered. Flick it again and the process is reversed. Although the Status has wider working parts than the Statesman, it's overall no wider. And for such a high capacity machine, it's relatively short at nine meters. Out to the field we go and straight onto Greentop on the fens not far from Ely. This was on soil the consistency of light soot and the farm manager commented it was the first time he'd seen a machine fitted with shares successfully lift potatoes. His own harvester uses Weimar discs. Being a first cousin of the Statesman, it was unsurprising that the single home roller had absolutely no problem extracting the major part of the home from the sample, with the table easily whisking away what was left. It was good as well to watch the easy flow of the crop over the roller table, with those very small drops being self-evidently better than anything one could find elsewhere. One of the next ports of call was up north to lift some 1.7 metre wide beds planted by the Standon Big Boy planter. Lightish sandy soil and a relatively small crop on this special trial plot left for ADAS assessments meant little or no material was carried up the web. This was a good test for its low angle to monitor just what sort of rollback one could expect. The answer was very little. In fact, since the variety was record, low damage was even more important than normal. In a dry year, it's thought by some people that roller tables could run into problems. Not so for Standen, and we were well pleased with the way the crop passed through the harvester, even with no cushioning soil. It looked good in the trailer too. Loading into boxes is a normal enough requirement these days, and for status, or for that matter statesman, the new elevator is entirely suitable for the job. Whether it's close up, where the inner row of boxes is just a few feet from the harvester, or whether it's at full reach, it has no difficulty in filling the boxes as well as anyone could wish. A bit of human assistance is, however, always welcome. We've already mentioned the fact that both statesmen and status are more than happy to tackle dry conditions. And so it's to a very dry, cloddy field we go next. It's important to extract clod before it passes into the trailer, because hard clod, mixing with tender potatoes, can only cause damage as they jiggle together on their way to the grading lines. Nor does one want to restrict output, which is why the status's big separation area is so important. Rain has not much featured in this film to date, but now it does. A move over to Herefordshire coincided with the first really wet weather of the season. On arrival, the farmer's Statesman 2 was having its 40 mm web swapped for a 50. This in itself is not a difficult job. Just link one web to the other and wind it round on the PTO. But even so, conditions were barely manageable. So how would the status perform? To add to the challenge, the tractor was fitted with row crop wheels. Here's the farmer's view. I was a bit worried this morning, all the rain we'd had overnight, and then uh, we're rising these plays on this bank. Uh, it's quite hilly at, uh, at the one end, and it coped very well. It went up there a treat. This is the wettest field we've harvested this year. We had a Statesman in 93, which we used, finished, and then sold and bought a new Statesman with a wider cart elevator for 94. You've now brought out the Status, which is a wider web machine, better for windrowing, bigger capacity, and it looks a very useful machine. The sun chose to shine before the day was out, which provided a splendid view from the rear of the harvester as it continued to deal with what was still extremely wet conditions. The Statesman 2 is a marvellous machine. The status can only be even better. 
Reference has just been made to windrowing, so it was very appropriate that the last farm we shall see in this film, this time in Shropshire, should be committed to the windrowing system. Here, two windrowers are placing four rows of record potatoes between the two rows the status is to harvest, a bit like Canada. Now it's possible to see the value of the sheer size of the status in terms of lifting and cleaning area as the six rows of potatoes pass through it. The 45mm first web allows the majority of the loose soil to fall out, whilst the home roller tackles the six rows of tops. The roller table was in its element. In fact, it was becoming obvious to us that the elevator, even with a width of 900 millimetres, was not able to cope with the enormous throughput of the status. And so production machines in 1995 will have an 1100 millimetre wide elevator, another dimension unmatched by the competition. As proof of the output, even with the 900 millimetre elevator, it soon catches up the two windrowers and must wait for them to get ahead. It took just 14 minutes to fill a trailer and to fill it with a very nice looking sample, which really is what status is all about. We're now bringing this film to a close and we hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for watching. It has shown you what will be available to you in 1995. It's a full range, it's a modern range and it's a range into which a lot of thought has gone. We're proud of what we've achieved in the last five years and hope that an increasing number of you watching this film will be turning to standards for your machinery requirements in the future to help you get the best out of your crop. And just when you thought you could go and make a cup of tea, there's more to come. How could we not let you see our final 1995 development, our inline version of The Statesman 2? Hot off the press, this piece of film shot in Scotland shows this new model at work with pickers on a special platform built to the rear of the harvester. A single low-level web takes the potatoes from the back of the rollers and presents them to up to four pickers for a final inspection and cleaning. Rejected material passes to the rear, whilst the by now perfect sample is brought back to the discharge elevator. Of course, this picking off principle lengthens the harvester, which is why the on-top manning system used by us for a number of years will still continue in the range. But we are sure there are a number of growers who will nonetheless be attracted to this new option. Now, it must be time for that cup of tea.